In this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can create this mountain range logo with the winding river using nothing but simple shapes in Inkscape. I should mention though that this tutorial is going to be more of an intermediate to advanced tutorial and that I'm not going to be going over every single step in excruciating detail. So if you're vaguely familiar with how the tools work in Inkscape, then you should be able to follow along with this tutorial. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy what Inkscape can do. So to get us started here in Inkscape, let's start out by making sure we are working with a similar layout by coming up here to where it says view and having widescreen disabled. Now for some reason, I think some of the newer versions of Inkscape automatically start out in widescreen mode. So if you have that enabled, just go ahead and disable that and your layout should look the same as mine here on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shape or the emblem for the logo. And I'm going to use the stars and polygons tool for that. I'm going to use the polygon setting with all of these input values here and I'm going to click and drag upward with my mouse on the canvas while holding control and shift so I can get a six sided shape like that where the points go vertically up and down as you can see there. Let me make that a little larger. Okay, I'm going to grab my selection tool, move this up towards the center of the page a little more and I'm going to convert this to a path by going to path, object to path. And then I'm going to grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and I want to take these two nodes right here and I'm going to enable the transformation handles and I'm just going to scale these nodes down a little bit like that. Okay, then I'm going to take these nodes over here and I'm going to scale these down like that. I'm holding Control and Shift while I do this to lock the, the, uh, the aspect ratio. And then I'm going to move these nodes up like that. And now we're starting to get the shape of our emblem. I may even pull this out a little bit. You may have to tweak this a little bit just to get it how you like it. That right there is about what I'm going for. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to turn off my transformation handles and then grab the selection tool. And let me open up the fill and stroke menu, which is located over here. And I will bring down the opacity of this a little bit so I can see through the object as I'm working with it. So what I want to do now is round off the corners here. And to make these corners rounded, I'm going to use a path effect for that. So I'll come up here to where it says path, choose path effects, click the plus icon down here to add new path effect. And the path effect I am looking for is corners. So I'm just going to type in corners and there it is, the corners path effect. I'm going to grab the nodes tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of the nodes right here. And I'm going to pull down one of these green handles to make these corners rounded. And you can't really see it happening as it happens, probably not on my screen, but if you see on your screen, there should be a blue outline indicating the degree to which the corners are being rounded right there. And if you release the click, you can see now we have some rounded corners there, which is what I'm going for. Now I want this top half of the design to be completely rounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deselect these nodes and I'm gonna take just this node right here. Oops, click the wrong thing. I'm gonna take just this node right here and I'm gonna bring this all the way down like that. So we end up with something like that right there. And now I will finalize this by going to path, object to path, press one to zoom back out to 100%. And maybe even, let me just make this a little, a little, uh, add a little more vertical height to it like that. This is just a personal preference. I'm just eyeballing this as I go along. Okay, that's looking good right there. So now I'm gonna create some mountains for the background here. To create the mountains, I'm gonna use the squares and rectangles tool. I'm gonna to click and drag. I'm gonna hold control and shift while clicking and dragging to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I wanna give this rounded corners a little bit. I'm gonna make these corners a little rounded like that. Not much, just a little bit. And then I will grab the selection tool and rotate this around like that. I'm gonna hold control while rotating so we get it nice and vertical like that. And I'm gonna give this a different color just so I could differentiate it up against the emblem over here. I'm gonna duplicate this a few times to make some mountains in the background. So I'm gonna press Control D to duplicate. I'll put this one up here. Control duplicate again, put this one down here. And then another copy over here. And that's about what I'm going for right there. So I'm gonna shift click all of these so I have them all selected. And I will unify them all together by going to Path, Union. And now I'm going to take a duplicate of the emblem here. I'm gonna select the emblem. Control D to duplicate it, hold shift, click on this shape, and we're gonna take the intersecting area here by going to path and selecting intersection. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of a, uh, a shadow effect to the corners of these mountains here. Let me grab the pen tool. Let me enable snapping. 
and then I'm gonna snap to this corner right here to create a point. I'm gonna hold control and bring this line. I'm gonna bring this line down into the right to make sure it's parallel with this line right here, this angle of this mountain. I'm gonna bring it the opposite way like that. And click, and then I'll bring this one up here. I'm letting go of control at this point. I'll bring this one up here, click again, and then back to the starting point. Okay, so I had a little technical difficulty there. I had to redo that one. Okay, let me grab a duplicate of this copy now. Control D. Put this over here, put this one over here, and there we go. Now I want to shift click all of these to select them, unify them together, path union, and then subtract them from the mountains. Hold shift, click on the mountains, path difference, and there we go. That right there is the effect I'm going for. Okay, so now I'm gonna create I'm gonna create a little winding river to place right here in the forefront of the uh, design here. So let me turn off snapping first. Let me grab the pen tool. And for this, we're going to get a little creative. I'm going to create just one vertical line like this. I'm going to click once to create a point, hold control, put this line down here like that, click again, and press enter. And grab the nodes tool and give this line a little bit of a curve. I'm going to select these handles over here and curve this out like that. There we go. Grab the selection tool and duplicate this. And I want to position this in such a way that the space between the two lines represents the shape kind of like a winding river. Now we're going to change the perspective of this to make it look like it's actually part of the landscape here. But for now, we're just trying to get this, this shape right here between these two lines. And once you have that shape like that, select both of them, convert these strokes to a path, path, stroke to path, and then unify them together, go to path, union, and now break them apart by going to path, break apart. And now if I click off of that to deselect it, you can see this has been broken up into separate pieces. And I want this piece over here. I'm going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we're looking for this piece right here. This is what we want to work with. So let me go back to my fill and stroke menu and bring down the opacity of this a little bit so I can see it better. I'm going to place this over here. Now I'm just going to use the transformation handles to uh, scale and shear this as needed. I'm just going to make this shorter like that. Maybe even scale this up like that. There we go. Maybe even make this a little wider so that it stretches out more across the design. Okay, that looks good. And if you really want to sell this effect, you can use the perspective path effect. So let me come over here to the path effects menu. Let me add a new path effect. And for this one, I'm looking for perspective envelope. So I'm going to type in P-E-R-S. And there it is, perspective. And now down here where it says type, make sure you have perspective enabled. And I'm going to enable this one right here that says mirror movements and vertical. And now I can grab the nodes tool and I should be able to take these two nodes right here and bring this up like that. And as you can see, we're changing the perspective of this river here to make it look like it's uh, disappearing into the vantage point there. Now I'm going to convert that to a path by going to path, object to path, make that a little bit bigger so that it stretches out among the bottom of the design here. And now I will fit that into the emblem. I may even make this a little bit, whoops, I may even make this a little bit, um, wider like that. I want the start of this river to be closer to this corner right here. So that looks good as it is. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to take this emblem shape right here, control D to duplicate it, shift click the river and go to path intersection. And there we go. Now we have that right there. Okay. So let's create a little pine tree to put right here in the forefront of the design. To do that, I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool. I want to make sure I have sharp corners. Click and drag to create a square like that. Convert it to a path. Again, make sure you have sharp corners here. Path, object to path. Grab the nodes tool. I'm going to delete this node right here by pressing delete on the keyboard. And then I'll take these nodes over here and I'll make those corners sharp like that. And now I can grab the selection tool and rotate this back around while holding control. So we lock it onto 15 degree angles like that. We want this nice and flat and upright. And I'm just going to make this a little narrower. I'll duplicate that bring this one down here, make this one a little bigger. And then I'll duplicate that and I'll bring this one down here and make that one a little bigger like that. I should probably be using darker colors so you can see this better. Let me go with blue. There we go. And there we go. I think that right there looks good. So I'm going to use that as it is. I'm going to select all of those path union. And there we go. There's our tree. So let me scale this down and place this at the front of the design over here. I may even place this 
I think right about here would be good. I want this to be, I want the tip of this tree to go to the, the edge of the river right here. Whoops, what happened? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna place that right about there. Okay, that's good enough. So let me duplicate the emblem and take the intersecting area there. Intersection. And let me give this thing some color so we can start differentiating the elements here. Let me select everything. We can now bring the opacity up and start adding in some color. So I want the mountain range here to be a dark shade of blue. Actually, I want to start with the background here. I want the background to be a light shade of blue. I'm going to start with uh, that shade right there, maybe that. And then I'll take this and I'll make this a dark blue like that. And I want the tree to be that same dark shade of blue. So I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is located over here. I just like to use the letter D on the keyboard. D for dropper. It's easy to remember. And there you go. And S for selection. Back to the selection tool. Grab the, uh, the river here. I'm going to make this the same color as this blue right here. D for the dropper. S for selection. There we go. And now I'm going to place a, a sun, a little bit of a sun rays in the background here. So let me grab the circles and ellipses tool. Click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. Place it in the center of the design. I'm going to make this white so we can see it better. And that's actually the color I'm going to use for the sun. So let me center this up. I'm going to shift click both of these. Open up the Align and Distribute menu, which is over here. We can press Control, Shift, and A to access that. And from the relative to, I want Last Selected Chosen. I'm just going to center that up on the vertical axis like that. Now let me make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to lower this down beneath the mountains. Now you can lower, you can raise and lower objects using these buttons. I just like to use the Page Up and Page Down keys on the keyboard. So I'm going to press Page Down to lower that. There we go. And now I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this. I'm going to press Control-D. I'm going to make this one bigger. There we go. And I'm going to make this one a lighter shade of blue. Again, pressing D on the keyboard to grab the dropper. Grab the uh, fill and stroke menu. Make this one a lot lighter. Oops. And then I'll just take this and page down and lower it beneath like that. And I'll maybe even make that one a little darker. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to duplicate this circle again. Control D. I'll make this one a little darker. Maybe even add a little more blue into it like that. And I'll make this larger. And I'm going to lower this down by pressing page, the, the page down key like that. There we go. I'm going to make this about this big. And then I'll make this one about this big. And at this point, we're just trying to size things up to make sure it fits nicely. And then I'm going to make this emblem. I want this to be a darker shade of blue than this. So let me press D on the keyboard to grab the dropper. And I'll make this one a little darker. Okay, that looks better. Now I'm going to update the river color to match this shade of blue right here. So let me just grab the dropper and do that. And now I'm going to take the intersecting area of this circle right here. So let me grab the emblem and duplicate that. Shift click the circle. Path. Intersection. There we go. And as you can see, the design is coming together here. The one final last step would be to add a little bit of a white border going around the outside and a drop shadow beneath it so it really pops off the page. So to do that, let me select just the emblem right here and go to Path and choose uh, Linked Offset. And I want to make this offset a totally different color so we can see it better. I'm going to choose Red. I'm going to grab the Node tool and there should be this little node up top over here and you should be able to grab this and pull this out like that. And I want the border of this emblem to be about, about that big. I can finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path, and then I will make that white. Grab the selection tool, and now I'm going to duplicate that by pressing Control D, and I'm going to make this one black. And now I can use my page down key to lower that down, and then I can use my arrow keys to bring this down a little bit. There we go. I'll give that a blur, and I'll bring down the opacity of that blur like that. And now I'll have to deselect it and select it again, and now I can use my arrow keys to move that down a little bit, just to give it a little bit of an offset. Okay, there we go. And I think that should do it for this lesson. That is how you can go about creating a mountain range logo with a winding river and a pine tree and a rising sun coming up beneath it inside of this element using nothing but simple shapes in Inkscape. Before I end this video, if you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. 
It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that in the description of the video if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.